Hello, this is Edith Niemeyer, and I'm the author of the book, The Mystery of Adam. Well, I guess I have to add another uh, video um, about the church. Uh, I'm not quite done. I guess the Holy Spirit kind of showed me more things. But my last video, um, I was talking about Torah and if the church or the believers uh, have to observe Torah. And so I said, no, because Torah was fulfilled. So I kind of looked at some things recently and I came across um, Dr. Michael Brown and one of his videos on his uh, video, um, on his YouTube uh, page uh, called Ask Brown. And he talked exactly about this topic and that was in episode 31. So if you want to do some further studies, um, you know, go to Dr. Michael Brown, who is a Jewish believer in uh, Messiah. And so um, he is very knowledgeable and he can give you more information on the subject. And what I learned from him is very interesting. I mean, he had more better figures than I had. You know, I said very clearly that the um, Torah or the law of Moses um, cannot be fulfilled today, even if we would want to fulfill the law of Moses or Torah, we couldn't because he said 75% of the law of Moses has to do with the temple or the tabernacle. Let's put it that way. It doesn't have to be a temple. It can be the tabernacle like they have the tent. But it is related to the sacrifices. And of course, we know that Christ was the final sacrifice. There are no more sacrifices needed. We know that from the Old Testament that um, once Messiah comes, um, sacrifices um, don't have to be made, you know, the atonement sacrifices don't have to be made anymore. Uh, there will be sacrifices uh, for um, what you would you call them, um, Thanksgiving, and but not for um, sacrifices for atonement because Jesus has atoned um, our sin for our sins once and for all. He doesn't have to be uh, continuously sacrificed um, because he was the perfect sacrifice. And the Old T Testament Torah teaches that when Messiah comes, um, and the Jews know that today, okay, that is part of their teaching of Messiah, that once Messiah comes, uh, the, uh, the, the sacrifices uh, don't have to con be continued. And, you know, thinking about that, I'm just thinking that, um, you know, the, in, the, uh, in Revelation, it says, once the Antichrist comes, the sacrifice, he will stop the daily sacrifice, okay? And that could, may have something to do because he proclaims himself to be Messiah, and so therefore the Jews stop the sacrifices. Okay, so it not necessarily has to be something um, terrible, but just him proclaiming himself that he is Jesus or that he is Messiah um, alone will stop the uh, atonement sacrifices. Um, so um, anyways, but the temple is not exist in existence right now. And so therefore, Torah... 75% of the law of Moses cannot be fulfilled right now anyway, okay? So, and the, the Bible says, the Old Testament says, if we cannot, uh, I mean, fulfill all the law, okay, we are not saved, okay? We are not justified. We have to do everything in the law, everything. If we don't do everything in the law, we have no... Uh, hope for salvation. That's just the way it is. 
Okay, even though Torah um, points to um, Messiah, Messiah's coming. It, it's not we're not saved through the blood of the, you know, the lambs or or even the cows or whatever the bulls. We're not saved by that. We all know that. Even the Old Testament people know that. And so, no, that is done forever. That is gone. I mean, Jesus Christ gave himself as the perfect lamb. And he died as the perfect, perfect lamb without blemish. So that, uh, for, for me, um, so for me, that's very important. Okay. Then I also wanted to kind of talk about something different, but this is uh, just adding to Torah why we don't have to observe Torah. It's good to know. Absolutely. We need to know Torah. We need to read Torah and we need to know about it uh, because it's our history. Um, it is uh, Torah points to Messiah. Okay. And so if we want to know about Messiah, we have to read uh, what points to him as well. But today I want to talk uh, about uh, just kind of a little bit more about the church and also about the rapture. I think that is very important too, that we know, I said last time, that the time of the Gentiles will come to an end. And when the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled, um, and that's exactly what the Bible says, if the times of the number of the Gentiles have been brought in, okay? And that includes, of course, the Jews as well. But since we're living in the times of the Gentiles, um, I guess he stressed the Gentiles. So when the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled, then Christ will return for his bride. Now, he himself said that. Um, he said in John, and I'm going to read that, in John 14, he said that he will go to the Father and prepare a place for us. Okay, remember, we are the bride of Christ. And so, therefore, right now, we are betrothed to Jesus. Now, in the Jewish betrothal, the bridegroom will go um, and prepare a place for the bride and then returns within a year to two to receive the bride. And during that time, the bride, the two are actually married. It's considered marriage. And uh, but the celebration hasn't happened. It was just like uh, the contract has been um, made, but the bride still has one year in the bridegroom to kind of um, prepare themselves for this marriage. And so this is what right now the time that we're having with Christ. We are already married to Christ. So we're already the bride of Christ. Um, but Christ left to prepare a place for us. And this we can read in John 14, and I'm starting with verse 2. And Jesus said himself, my father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? Okay. And let's see the next one, 13. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. So he's talking about the church, the bride of Christ. You know the way to the place where I'm going. And now we're going to... Five. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Okay, so the point here is that Jesus himself is going to prepare a place, and then he will come back and get 
his bride. And he told us the story also in one of his parables. Um, that was the parable of the ten virgins. Okay, and that is exactly what we are. We're still virgins because um, you are betrothed, but the whole year that or the two that the bridegroom is preparing a place for the bride, you're not going to interact sexually. Okay, so the bridegroom is coming back for his virgin. And so this parable in Matthew 25 describes exact, exactly what's going to happen when Christ returns. And you will know if you know that a parable of the ten virgins, you will know that five were not prepared. So 25 says, at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Okay, because they heard the bridegroom. See, when the bridegroom comes, there's going to be all this racket. And it's usually at night. And so they hear it. Hey, the bridegroom is, is coming, and it's in the middle of the night. Okay, and so they're taking their lambs, and they're meeting the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamb, but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lambs. Okay, the bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At night, the cry rang out, "Here's the bridegroom! Come out to meet him!" Then all of the virgins woke up and trimmed their lambs. And the foolish ones said to the wise, "Give us some of your oil." Our lambs are going out. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both of us. Instead, go, go to those who sell oil and buy some of your yourselves, some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. So this is very um, symbolic of what will happen when Christ returns. Now, what is this oil? What does this oil symbolize? Well, I believe oil in the Bible, in the, in the Old Testament, always symbolizes the Holy Spirit. And so um, this is what I believe that what that the oil symbolizes. So five of the virgins, they looked like virgins. They thought they were virgins. They thought they were betrothed to the bridegroom. They probably had white robes on. Uh, waiting for the bridegroom, acted like the virgins, um, acted like the bride, um, you know, said everybody, oh, I'm the bride, I'm waiting for the bridegroom. You know, they did everything. But when it came to having the Holy Spirit, they did not have the Holy Spirit. Okay. And so when the bridegroom came, they were not ready. And what did the bridegroom say? He said, I didn't know. I don't know you. I don't know you. Okay, you you may have been acting like you were a part of the bride uh, group. I mean the the bride or the church. You may have been looking like a Christian. You were saying, "Oh, I'm a Christian." You may have been acting like a Christian, but you were not connected. You were not connected to the 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 vine. Okay, uh, or if you want to use. Uh, the um, the um, olive tree. It doesn't matter what you use. Sometimes uh, Jesus says the, the vine. Sometimes it's the olive tree. You have to be plugged in. Okay. If you're plugged in, you're connected. You have the juice from the, the stem. Okay. If you're not connected because you don't have any juice, you're dead. Okay. If you're not connected, then you will be cut off and Jesus will not know you. So this is. Um, a wake-up call 
for these people that keep saying, well, yeah, I'm a Christian. Um, and really, they are not. They are not really connected to the Holy Spirit. Now, people are going to say, well, how am I going to connect to the Holy Spirit? Well, first, number one, of course, we are saved through faith. And we have to trust that Jesus Christ died uh, for us alone. Nothing else, you know, no uh, Old Testament rituals will uh, save us or redeem us. We know from the prophets, we know that Jesus Christ alone, Messiah alone, God alone is our redeemer. We know that. And if we believe that um, and we say, okay, I want to belong to Jesus. In other words, I want to follow him. And then we are connected to the Holy Spirit. See, some people, there's so many people that say, well, I'm saved. I'm saved. Yeah, I'm saved. But they don't follow Jesus. They don't take him as this bridegroom. If, 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 if he's my bridegroom, you know what? I will be one with him. Okay, I, I can't follow somebody else then. Uh, I can't follow, you know, idols. Uh, if he's my bridegroom, he's my bridegroom. What do I do if I follow idols? Uh, I commit adultery. Okay, I commit adultery. And if I'm betrothed to the bridegroom, and I don't have to have, you know, this ceremony going, I have to be betrothed the minute I'm betrothed to him. Um, and I um, follow idols. Guess what? I commit adultery. Um, and that's just the way it is. Okay. So I have to make sure that I'm truly following um, Jesus, that he's truly my bridegroom. And when I do that, when I do follow him, then I will receive the Holy Spirit and I will be connected. See, it's like, therefore, the man shall leave father, mother, and cleave to his wife, and they become what? One flesh. Okay. So what does that have to do with Jesus? Well, we are becoming the same kind of flesh. Uh, he is the bridegroom, and we are the bride. And when we are agreeing that we are uh, married, we call it marriage, then we are one, and we are connecting to each other. And so that is exactly what will uh, what has what will happen if you. Some people say, well, I'll, I'll accept Jesus as my Savior, my Lord and Savior. But so many people just ignore that Lord part. And they just go, okay, I'm saved. You know, Jesus saved me. He died on the cross for me. Um, but that is not everything. We accept him as Lord and Savior. Okay. Now, Lord was the, uh, the, the way in the old times the women addressed their husband as Lord. Okay, now you can address Jesus as Lord because many people do that and that's okay. But we have to understand the relationship that we have with Christ. We become one. Okay, in when we accept Jesus and, and his atonement, we become one, one uh, being, one being. Okay, and so then we are ready, we are connected, and we have to know that we're connected to the Holy Spirit and follow um, and, and, and kind of submit to the Holy Spirit and his changing power. So now, um, after you have seen that, that he will come back, okay? He will come back. And if you read Thessalonians 1 and 2, uh, it talks about the rapture. It talks about the time when Jesus returns and uh, picks up his bride in the middle of the night, okay? Or as a thief in the night. And I don't have it in front of me, actually. I could, but um, you can do that yourself. Look up First and Second Thessalonians. It says, you know, in a twinkling of an eye and the the, the trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ will rise first. And then we who are uh, remain uh, left and remain will be caught up with uh, them in the clouds. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Now, I believe that this rapture will happen before the wrath. Okay. Simply because the Bible tells us. 
if you continue reading in, uh, I think it's Second Thessalonians or First, I don't remember exactly, but it tells you if you continue to read, don't just stop. It says that we are not destined for wrath, okay, but for salvation, because we're the bride, okay. Why would uh, Christ, um, you know, save us and then punish us? Uh, the punishment and the wrath of God is for the unbelievers. Um, whether it be the Gentiles or the Jews, it doesn't matter. See, so many people believe also that um, the tribulation is not for the Jews, but it's not true. It is for the true the, the Jews as, as well, for the unbelieving Jews. Now, the believing Jews, which will be a remnant, um, they will be saved or protected during that tribulation. And um, however, they will not be part of the bride um, of Christ. They will not be part of the bride of Christ. Um, so anyways, um, so Christ will return for his bride before the wrath of God. Again, in the Old Testament, the tribulation, the great tribulation also has a different name. It's called Jacob's, Jacob's trouble. Okay, and Jacob's trouble is the same as the tribulation. And of course, what does it say? Jacob's trouble. So that trouble will also apply to the Jews. Okay. And of course, the Jews that are not believers, um, they will go through the wrath. And it probably will be most people because most, most Jews will be deceived very, very severely. I mean, if they're now shut up and and, and don't want to see Messiah, I mean, they will be deceived, um, you know, as well during that time. Because during that time, that's when the Antichrist, or, and I will talk about this later, because I believe the Antichrist will be Jewish. Uh, it will be the false Messiah. Um, and uh, I think Antichrist, okay, Christ, anti-what? Messiah, right? So he will be the anti-Messiah. See, it's translated as Christ because Messiah was, or Mashiach, was translated as Christ in the Greek. But in the Hebrew, it is what? It is Mashiach or Messiah. And so this anti-Mashiach or anti-Messiah will be actually the, probably the Messiah, the false Messiah of the, Messiah of the Jews. And many Jews will be totally, you know, deceived. Now, the two witnesses will stand up and say, wait a minute, people, that's not true. He's not the real Messiah, okay? And those two witnesses will say, point to the real Messiah, okay? And say, that's the real Messiah. But of course, they will be killed. And I believe they will be killed by their own people, okay? They will not be killed by the Gentiles. They will be killed by their own people. Because Gentiles don't have a reason, you know, to, to kill um, the two witnesses. Because the two witnesses will witness um, for the Jewish people. And, of course, Gentiles will hear it as well. But the main thing will go to the Jews. Okay? They will, it will be going to the Jews. Because I said during the tribulation, the Jews, again, will have the... Uh, responsibility to tell people about Messiah. So anyways, I want to also go, uh, because some people say, oh, that's not, um, that's not Old Testament. The rapture is not Old Testament. But there is one verse that I have found that show exactly that rapture, the rapture is um, prophesied in Isaiah. So let's look at Isaiah 26, 20. It says, um, let me see if I need to go to, to 19 first. Oh, this is good. Yeah, I want to start with 2619. It says, but your dead will live, Lord. Their bodies will rise. Okay, so we have to know this. See, this is rapture. But your dead will live, Lord. Their bodies will rise. Let those who dwell in the dust wake up and shout for joy, 
Your dew is like the dew of the morning. The earth will give birth to her dead. Okay, this is talking about the rapture. Now, why do I talk about the rapture? This is not way at the end, but before the rapture, because it continues to say in 2620, go my people, enter your rooms and shut the doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while until his wrath has passed by. Um, Let me see. Chambers is another word. The, the standard English version says, Come, my people, enter your chambers. Okay? Um, chambers is sometimes also used. And that is exactly what Jesus said. He will prepare a place for us. He will prepare a, a room. My father's house has many rooms, and I will go and prepare a place for you. So here he says, Isaiah, Go, my people, enter your rooms. And shut the doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while. To what? Until his wrath has passed by. Okay? So again, and in 19, it talks about what? The resurrection. Because we know when we read First and Second Thessalonians, we know that the dead will rise first. And then we who are left will um, be caught up with them in the clouds and meet the Lord. Uh, you know, and be with him forever. But here, Isaiah says the same thing. But your dead will live, Lord. Their bodies will rise and let those who dwell in the dust wake up and shout for joy. Your dew is like the dew of the morning and the earth will give birth to her dead. Now, again, this is not just about the dead. The way the ones that are living also will be part of this. And then, then it says, go, my people, enter your rooms or your chambers. Uh, and shut the doors behind you. That's when we are raptured and the door is closed. Like the virgins, okay? They came to the door and they knocked and the door was closed behind them. Hide yourselves for a little while until his wrath has passed. Okay? So that's why I believe in the pre-rapture, um, uh, pre-before the wrath of God, and is poured out uh, on this world. And the, the wrath of God is poured out on Gentiles and on Jews. That's just the way it is. Okay, so many think, oh, you know, all these Gentiles will go against Jerusalem and, um, you know, but you know what happens when they go against Jerusalem? Well, Jerusalem, everybody will be destroyed. Okay, not just the Gentiles, the Jews as well. And again, there will be only a remnant, a small number of people that start believing after the rapture, okay? A small number of people that will um, believe. Now, I believe as soon as the rapture probably happens, um, there will be the witness, the, the two witnesses, which Revelation talks about. And they will be two Jewish witnesses that will witness um, for everybody, the Jews and the Gentiles, and they will uh, point to Jesus Christ, okay, um, and, and say, hey, you know, this is the false messiah, because I think the false messiah will um, come on the scene as well during that time, and uh, that's why the two witnesses will definitely set the Jewish people straight and say, this is not, this is the false messiah, okay, but they will kill him. Okay, what they have killed the prophet left and right. Every prophet um, they have killed, really. I mean, what prophet did they not kill? So they will kill those two prophets as, uh, prophets as well. Um, they don't want to hear about it. They want their own Messiah. They have always wanted everything, you know, the way they want it. They wanted their own kings. And, and look what kind of kings they, they came up with. They t constantly led them astray. Uh, during Jesus' time, what did they have? They didn't even have um, a king that is a, a descendant of, of, of Judah. It, it, he was a, a, a total, I think, a mix of Gentile and, and Jew. So he was not even 100% Jewish. 
Um, but yeah, okay, we have a king, you know, and we have to follow it. And the high priests, of course, um, and the priests, they just continued, even though some, uh, you know, went to the scenes, to the Dead Sea, um, to the uh, scene community, and they didn't want to have anything to do with the the priest, the priests during Jesus' time. So, well, anyways, but that's a different story, so I don't want to go there. But all I wanted to talk about today is the bride of Christ and that we are right now, we are waiting for Messiah's return. Okay, that is our thing. If you're truly a believer and if you're really part of Christ's bride, you have to be waiting for Messiah every day, every day. And the early Christians had a saying called Maranatha. And Maranatha means uh, that the Lord is coming. Okay, they reminded each other every time they saw each other that the Lord is coming. See, during Paul's time, um, Paul and I believe this is disciples, uh, they believed that Jesus uh, uh, would return in their during their lifetime, um, and Nobody thought it would take 2,000 years for him to return. They expected him back. And as a matter of fact, there's a, a, a section in John that says, you know, um, if I want that this one will remain, but he's only saying if I want. So, but some people say, well, that John will not die, um, you know, until Christ returns. But of course, we've been waiting for 2,000 years, and I think we're pretty close to his second coming. Um, and the first thing that happens before he actually comes back on this earth is that the, that the bride will be taken out, okay? Because we will return. We will return with him. And maybe I can add actually a little bit on that. Hmm. Maybe talk a little bit about Revelation before I continue. I mean, I will not probably bring that in my book, but I think this is a good time to maybe bring this in and talk a little about, little bit about his return and where I think um, Revelation is pointing to um, this rapture, for instance. Okay, when does the rapture happen in Revelation? Uh, it's it's very uh, obvious. And, and I know it's a little, uh, Revelation is a little compu uh, confuse, confusing, but we can still see it. We can still see it. And so um, maybe it's something I can actually do too. Um, again, I'm not going to put that in my book, but it would be something uh, wonderful to add. Um, so, but today I want to finish up. So I want you to, uh, you know, read these things, um, Isaiah 26, 20, start with 19, 19 and 20. Um, what else? The virgins, the 10 virgin story in Matthew uh, 25. And I think it goes to 18, 1 through 18. And Isaiah, and I already said that Isaiah, and I also had I'm trying to think it John fourteen and I don't know when I started uh, probably two I believe it was two uh fourteen two probably uh yeah let's see what was fourteen. 14.1. How does that start? 41 says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God and believe also in me. Okay, and then he continues in 14.2, John 14.2, with uh, him preparing a place for us. So I will finish up today. Read the verses and do your own studies. And maybe next time I will talk more about the rapture and how we can find the rapture in Revelation. And also read um, First and Second Thessalonians because um, the rapture actually talks about 
uh, the rapture is also talked about in Thessalonians and first, I mean, I think Corinthians. I don't know if first or second Corinthians, but I usually read first and second Thessalonians. All right. I will talk to you soon um, a little more.